Welcome to Math in a Box with Susan Johnsey. In this lesson, we're going to learn to find the square roots, cube roots, or fourth roots of problems that involve variables. And we will also look at problems that have variables and numbers. In a prior lesson, I taught you how to find the square root, cube roots, or fourth roots when you just are given numbers. And that's what the list is from uh, the prior lesson. The squares list, the cubes list, the fourth power list, and down at the bottom, the fifth power list. You really needed to have learned those. I've added a few things here. For the squares list, these are variables that have been squared. This was x and it's squared. This was actually x squared that's squared. x to the sixth was x cubed squared. This was x to the fourth that was squared and x to the fifth and so on. And then we have the cube roots, uh, the cubes rather. This was x squared and raised to the third power. So if you write an x squared down three times and multiply, what do you get? This should help you remember your exponent rules. We'll be using exponent rules in, this, in these problems. When you multiply, remember that you add the exponents together. So this is x to the sixth, and I wrote it three times, x squared. That's why the cube root of x to the sixth is x squared. All right, let's look at our first example. What is the num uh, expression that you can write down twice and get x to the sixth? That would be x to the third. If you write x to the third down twice and multiply, you will have x to the sixth. What can you write down twice and get y to the tenth? It would be y to the fifth. One little extra thing I've got to explain to you. In the last lesson, we talked about a square root and a negative square root. The negative out in front. When they write the one with just a square root, they are asking you for a positive answer. When they put the negative in front, <coughs> they're asking you for a negative answer. Now, I did not use a negative in front. I did use this symbol. So I'm asking you for a positive answer. Well, we don't really know what these variables are. <coughs> and therefore, if the x is a negative number, what happens when you write a negative number down three times and multiply? You'll get a negative. Or if you have a negative number for the y, if you write it down five times and multiply it out, you will get a negative number. Now, a negative times a negative would give us a positive, but if only one of these is negative, that means that I've given you a negative answer. And the square root symbol, when it has no sign in front, means that it wants a positive answer. So what we do is we use absolute value bars. When we want something to be positive and we're not sure that it is. So the square root of x to the sixth, y to the tenth, is the absolute value of x cubed, y to the fifth. All right, let's change the problem a little bit. You'll see it, the problem here. I have changed the 6 to a 9 and the 10 to a 13. So when I ask you the same question, what can we write down twice, multiply, and get x to the 9, the answer is not x to the 3. Well, if I write x to the 4th times another x to the 4th, I get x to the 8th. If I change those to 5s, I will get x to the 10th. So what we have to do is change the x to the ninth to x to the eighth times an x. That does equal x to the ninth. We will also have to change y to the thirteenth to y to the twelfth times a y. So you see now I can take the square root of x to the eighth and I can take the square root of y to the twelfth. The square root of x to the eighth is x to the fourth. Because if I write x to the 4th times another x to the 4th, that's x to the 8th. The square root of y to the 12th is y to the 6th. So the other two that are left, the x and the y, remain underneath the square root. Now in this problem, we have x to the 4th and we have y to the 6th. Since we have even powers here, uh, there's no chance of us getting a negative answer. If you write a negative down four times and multiply, you'll get a positive. If you write it down six times, you'll get a positive. So these are positive, so I do not have to use the absolute value bars. All right, now let's look at one that has a number. 
This will require you to think about numbers again, and like I said, you have to have two mindsets. To find the square root of 50, we look at our squares list. What in the squares list will divide evenly into 50? Well, it's 25. So we will change this problem to 25 times 2, because that's 50. The first number that I write will need needs to always come from the list of squares, x to the fifth. I cannot find the square root of x to the fifth, so I will change it also to the x to the fourth times x. And now we are ready to find the square root. You notice that I underlined the two that we know. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of x to the fourth is x to the 2. And then what's left underneath the square root is the 2 and the x. Again, the x squared will be a positive number, and 5 times x squared is positive. So I do not have to worry about the absolute value bars on this answer. All right, we have numbers and we have variables. In order to find the square root of 288, let's look at our list of squares over here. What, which one of these, the largest one that you can think of, that will divide evenly into 288? 144 times 2 is 288. Now you do have to guess a little bit sometimes or use some scratch paper. The ones that I know are the 144, y to the 14th, and the m squared. So our final answer is going to be 12 y to the 7th m. Square root of 2y. Now the y to the 7th could be negative, the m could be negative. Those both have an odd power, so we have to use absolute values on those. Let's look at the cube root of 16b squared. Cube roots. Let's begin with the number 16. Which of these numbers, which of these will divide evenly into 16? Well, obviously it is 8. Uh, the b squared. Well, the b squared, its exponent is 2. We would need at least to have an exponent of 3 in order to find a cube root. So there's no way to change the b squared. We will not be able to find its cube root. So our answer is the cube root of 8 was the 2. And then we still have underneath the cube root a 2 and a b squared. All right, let's look at another one. All right, now we're looking at our cube list over here. Which of these numbers is the largest one? you can find will divide evenly into 128. The cube root of 128 can be changed to the cube root of 64 times 2. See the 64, remember it's on the squares list, but it's also on the cube list because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So now what are we going to do with b to the fifth? Oh, this one's not, we've not done one like this. Now remember we're taking cube roots. So we need to change this to b to the third so that I can take the cube root. b to the three and b to the two is equal to the b to the fifth. Now, which ones can we take the cube root of? The cube root of 64 is 4. The cube root of b cubed is b. Now we don't have to think about absolute values on cube roots. That is only when you have an even root, square roots or fourth roots. We don't have the fourth root of 162. Now look at your list of fourth powers. Which one divides evenly into 162? The fourth root of 81 times 2. x to the 11th, we'll have to change it to an x to the 4, or better yet, an x to the 8. Because I can take the fourth root of x to the 8th. What could I write down four times and get x to the 8th? We'll see. All right, and then we would have to have x to the 3 as well. All right, underline the ones you know. The fourth root of 81 is what? 3. The fourth root of x to the 8th is x to the 2. If you write that down four times and multiply, you will have x to the 8. So what do we have left under the fourth root? We have a 2x to the 3rd. 
and that's our answer. This is Susan Johnson with mathinabox.com. If you have any questions, please email me.